there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books and today is the 8th of June so we're here with our book of the month predictions. This is my favorite video to make each month. I so look forward to researching the books that are releasing, talking about the books that I'm really excited and this is getting such a great response so I'm super excited to continue along with these videos. As you can see today we're in a different location that is because we have some house guests and they have taken over the front of my house. So I decided to shoot my video in my bedroom today. If you hear a little bit of background noise, just be patient with that. That is because we have guests over. Um, so that being said, let's go ahead and jump into my predictions for July, 2023. I have to say July is gonna be a difficult month to predict because there are so many amazing books coming out. When I was creating my list and like weaning it down to what I thought would be like the most likely candidates for each genre, I had such a struggle. This is going to be one of those videos where it's a little longer than typical because I have so many potential ideas for what book of the month could pick. Um, so I hope you're ready for a busy reading month because even if these don't get picked up by book of the month, they're definitely books that you should be adding to your TBR anyways. So as per usual, we're going to start with the horror and thriller genre. I have two selections for this category at this time. First up, we have Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. This currently has a 4.08 and about 414 reviews on Goodreads so far. This is described as a nod to Mexican horror movies with a pinch of Nazi occultism mixed in. This is a dark thriller about the curse that haunts a legendary film and goes on to awaken one woman's powers. I think that this is a likely pick. So Silvia Moreno Garcia has been featured before very successfully by Book of the Month. Obviously Mexican Gothic did really well. Gods of Jade and Shadow was another book of hers that was featured. Um, I feel like she is a pretty popular author and I think usually when they feature her, it does pretty well. The reason that I think this particular book will get picked up even though they didn't pick up her last book, The Daughter of Dr. Moreau, is because this has that kind of creepy horror vibe. It's set in 1990s Mexico City. It's got kind of a dark noir grunge feel and I just think this would really fit with Book of the Month. Then we have Her Little Flowers by Shannon Morgan. This currently has a 4.49 and about 63 reviews on Goodreads so far. This is a debut horror novel that follows a character named Francine who has lived in the family manor for 50 years with nobody but the ghosts to keep her company. When her estranged sister returns, she brings with her secrets that can upend everything. This has been getting really good feedback so far, and I feel like this has some like creepy gothic horror vibes, a little bit of haunting mixed in, and then some family drama to top it off. This sounds like such a good book. Book of the Month does like to feature debuts, so this could be one. Next, we're gonna jump into the historical fiction category, and let me tell you, this was such a hard one to put together. There are so many good historical fiction books coming out this month. So I am very excited about the four that I've picked, but believe me when I tell you it was hard. There was a whole bunch of other ones I could have put on here as well. First up, we have The Air Raid Book Club by Annie Lyons. This currently has a 4.41 with about 123 ratings so far. This book is set in 1938 London and we have a main character named Gertie who has recently become a widow. She is the owner of a bookshop and she's considering shuttering it because it's just not the same without her husband anymore. But then Hitler comes to power and she ends up rescuing a young Jewish woman and protecting her via the bookshop. As bombs fall around them, Gertie and Hetty create the Air Raid Book Club, a club that's meant to bring joy to people in the worst of times and occupy their minds as things explode around them. For me, the reason that I think this makes sense for Book of the Month is because what a unique concept. We have seen a lot of WW2 historical fic, but this is a very unique focus. It's not just about the war, it's about how people processed the war and dealt with the things that were happening around them. And I love the inclusion of books and a book club within this particular story. I think this makes a lot of sense for Book of the Month. After that, we have The Sea Elephants by Shastri Akella. This currently has a 4.29 and about 42 ratings on Goodreads so far. This book is set in 1990s India. We have a main character named Shagun who is dealing with his father's violent disapproval. To get away from his father, he actually enrolls himself in an all boys boarding school. When Shagun falls in love with a photographer named Mark, he must decide if he's brave enough to claim his own happiness. 
This is a debut novel. We know that Book of the Month loves to feature debut novels. The cover of this book is stunning, guys. This would make for a beautiful aesthetic addition to Book of the Month as well. I also feel like topically this makes a lot of sense for Book of the Month. Because it's Pride Month, I expect to see them featuring a couple books at least that have LGBTQ themes. So this also fits along with that. I would love to see this popping up and I actually have an ARC copy of this and I can't wait to read it. Next up is Every Rising Sun by Jamila Ahmed. This currently has a 4.54 and about 28 reviews on Goodreads so far. This book is a retelling of 1001 Nights. Our main character Sherazad is going to rely on her wit to navigate opulent palaces brimming with treachery and the perils of the Third Crusade as her Persian homeland teeters on the edge of destruction. I am so here for this. I love retellings. I think that it'd be great to see 1001 Nights retold. I love that this is focused on Scheherazade and I think this kind of has a little bit of a feminist bent to it. I would love to see Book of the Month pick this up. And our last historical fiction option is Queen of Exiles by Vanessa Riley. This currently has 4.29 and about 24 ratings so far. This book follows Haiti's queen, Marie-Louise Coydavid. She becomes a queen when she marries the king of Haiti, but her rule is threatened when the king is overthrown and eventually takes his own life. Her and her daughters escape the coup that takes her husband's life and flee to Italy. In Italy, she not only has to raise her daughters, but she has to do so among European societal elites, and she has to learn how to leverage those elites to help her homeland of Haiti. This sounds like such an interesting book. It's got a badass female character. It's about a historical piece that is something you don't really hear a ton about. I think there's a lot of intrigue and a lot to be learned from it. I would love to see this as an option for book of the month. Next up is the fantasy and sci-fi category. We have some awesome books in this one too. First we have The Deep Sky by Yume Kitase. This currently has a 4.17 and about 147 reviews on Goodreads so far. This is a debut novel that follows a mission into outer space that is set to save humanity. But the mission starts out with a lethal explosion that leaves the crew questioning the loyalty of its members. The reason that I think Book of the Month might pick this up is because this book is kind of giving me the Martian vibes. I feel like there is going to be a space crew stranded out in space. They're gonna have to figure out how to survive. There's some like espionage and distrust. It's like a thriller, a sci-fi, all that kind of jammed into one and I feel like that would be great for book of the month. I also feel like they haven't had a sci-fi pick for a couple months so this would be a natural choice and as we know they love to feature debuts and since it's a debut it also makes sense. Then we have The Weaver and the Witch Queen by Genevieve Gornacek. This currently has a 4.42 and about 45 reviews on Goodreads so far. Agni and Signy meet Gunhild as children. When Signy is kidnapped, Agni swears that she is going to find her and return her to their home. Gunhild, who fled home to become a witch, finds her future entangled with King Eric, the heir apparent to Norway. I think Book of the Month is likely to pick this because they have previously featured The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornachek, and that was a relatively popular pick. I am digging all the mythology retelling, so I can see them diving back into Norse mythology pretty successfully. Um, I do have an ARC of this book and I'm really excited about it. I enjoyed The Witch's Heart a lot, so I'm sure I'm going to enjoy this one. And I would also, again, really love to see this pop up in Book of the Month. And our last pick for this category is The Sun and the Void by Gabriela Romero La Cruz. This currently has a 3.82 and about 173 ratings so far on Goodreads. So this book is inspired by the history and folklore of South America. The author is originally from Venezuela, so I'm curious to see how she's going to be incorporating Venezuelan folklore into this. We have two young women named Reina and Eva. Both of them are kind of on the edges of society, and both of them are drawn into situations where magic is present and they may have the opportunity to mess with it, but they don't know what expenses it's going to come at. Both of them are walking a dangerous edge. The reason that I think Book of the Month might pick up this book is because it sounds so interesting. It's a little bit different than some of the other fantasies that Book of the Month has picked up in the past, but I think it would be great to see them include a South American fantasy instead of like always picking kind of Eurocentric fantasies. I love the cover of this. Aesthetically, I think it would make a gorgeous option for their book boxes. And I feel like this is going to be a really cool series to come. Now to the genre that I dread every single month, romance. It's so hard because I really don't know anything about romance and what's cool, what's being published, what's hyped. 
you know. So again, as always, my best guess is, but I don't really know. My first selection was To Have and To Heist by Sarah Desai. This currently has a 3.95 and about 40 reviews so far. To exonerate her best friend, one woman must execute a high pressure heist in the middle of the wedding of the season. The reason that I picked this book for a book of the month selection is because Sarah Desai has been featured previously by book of the month. I believe her book was The Wedding Plan. And if you check on book of the month, it is sold out. It was so popular that they sold every single copy of the book that they had. And so to me, that bodes well for a possible second option. And then we have Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. That currently has a 4.25 and about 442 reviews on Goodreads so far. Our main character, Sadie, is suffering from facial blindness. We're hoping that it's temporary, but she doesn't really know for sure. While she is adjusting to a very disorienting world and an inability to recognize anyone, two different men step into her life. There's just one problem. The timing couldn't be worse. The reason that I picked this book is because Catherine Center has been featured by Book of the Month several times before. It's always very successful. I believe Catherine Center is relatively popular and um, I wouldn't be surprised if they did pick her up. Next up, we're going to get into contemporary and literary fiction. So many selections for this category as well. First up, we have Crook Manifesto by Colson Whitehead. This currently has a 4.09 and about 79 reviews on Goodreads so far. So this book is a continuation of Harlem Shuffle, a book that Book of the Month previously featured, and it follows Ray Carney, who is a furniture store owner and an ex-fleece. So Ray is trying to live on the straight and narrow. He's trying to do right by his family. But when his daughter wants some Jackson 5 tickets, Ray tries to pull a few strings to make that happen. The only thing is that it thrusts him into a situation he did not plan on being in. I think that Book of the Month could pick this up because like I said, they featured Harlem Shuffle previously, which is the first book in this series. I think it did pretty well. I don't know if it was like the most hype book ever, but I definitely saw it out there quite a bit. And Colson Whitehead is an amazing author. I know a lot of people really love his writing, so it wouldn't at all surprise me to see this book pop up in Book of the Month this month. And then we have Tropicalia by Harold Rogers. This currently has a 4.21 and about 33 reviews on Goodreads so far. A few days before New Year's, a family meets on Copacabana Beach and they eagerly await the return of the family matriarch. But the return is tainted by the Cunha family's bad luck. Everything comes to a head with a fire and a knife on Copacabana Beach. The reason that I think Book of the Month might pick this book is because it's a family drama. It's set in Brazil. It's a debut novel. It deals with some deep themes and topics and um, it kind of fits along the lines of some of the other books that Book of the Month has featured in the past. These family sagas seem to be right up the Book of the Month alley. And my third option for contemporary fiction is going to be Sunshine Nails by Mai Nguyen. This currently has a 3.88 and about 188 reviews so far. This book follows a Vietnamese Canadian family living in Toronto. They own a nail salon and they will do anything to protect it, including tearing the family apart. This book is a debut novel and it's being compared to Olga Dies Dreaming and The Fortunes of Jaded Women. Both of those books were selections by Book of the Month. So if this book truly is in that kind of a lane, then I could see this being a logical pick for Book of the Month as well, especially considering it's a debut. And our last category is going to be memoir. We're going to be talking about Owner of a Lonely Heart by Beth Nguyen. This currently has a 3.93 and about 27 reviews on Goodreads so far. This memoir follows Beth's story. So when she was about eight months old, she and her father and some of their family immigrated from Vietnam to the United States following the Vietnam War. Her mother was left behind. And then Beth doesn't see her mother again until she's 19 years old. So I believe this book is gonna be exploring the relationship between a mother and a daughter who grew apart over the years. Uh, it sounds really emotional, really impactful. I think that it's been a while since Book of the Month has featured a memoir and I feel like I've been throwing out memoirs that could possibly fit for the last couple months and they haven't picked one so I think it's really time for them to pick a memoir and this sounds like it would be an awesome one for them to pick. So those are all my selections for Book of the Month this month. There are some very well-known authors that are dropping books in July. I didn't mention any of the really major thrillers that are coming out because honestly, most people are already aware of them. A lot of the other people that predict book of the month are already talking about those ones. And I like to give you guys some options that are not necessarily the most predictable options. I feel like it's a little more fun that way, especially when I get a few of them right. 
So if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up, comment down below, and let me know which of these books are you most excited about? Which ones would you really like to see in the book of the month box? And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button down below, as well as the notification bell so that you never miss a video. And that way we can see each other again soon. Thanks so much for joining. Bye.